What's going on, ladies and gents, boys and girls of Air Gun World? This is your boy Will here again. And uh, today we got um, something a little different today. We're going to do uh, a little tutorial here, a repair uh, of the uh, Flex. And the reason I'm doing the video is because there is none that I can find out there as far as repairing the flex for any kind of uh, leaks which you know all our guns do leak uh, they will leak eventually uh, within time it could be five years for some it could be three years for some it could be one year for some it could be a couple of days for some for mine it was about uh, let me see I had this guy already here for about uh, going on three months so I had the flex already for about three months and I got my first little hiccup, um, which is pretty normal for any air gun. I know I got a couple of guys out there like, you know, I bought a piece of crap. It's a, it's a leaking nightmare, but I'm not, I'm not going to dig into that because all guns leak. So for the few out there who believe that the flex is uh it's a leaking uh gun that's no good uh i don't i'm not gonna buy into that story the flex is amazing uh uh trying to find a tutorial for the leakage if it's if the gun was that bad there would be a lot of people complaining about it as far as uh you know making some kind of video saying that the gun leaks and it's no good but I haven't gotten that, but any gun leaks, so I'm going to be the first to make a uh, tutorial on our flex here as far as the leakage. I found a lot on the uh, streamlines and FX impacts, but I couldn't find anything on, on the flex. So uh, all you flex owners out there, uh, stay tuned. Grab some popcorn and a drink. We're going on a little mission here. All right, guys. So, uh, the gun's leaking, but it's an easy fix. Uh, I already know what the problem is, and it's not an O-ring problem. Uh, all the O-rings are brand new on this gun. There shouldn't be an O-ring problem. I double, triple checked every single O-ring. I didn't see any kind of damage on any of the o-rings so i didn't even change them out because i know that they're all fine um i do have o-ring kits i can replace them at any time i want and uh the best part about the flex is wonderful even with my custom two tank my custom two tank has 10 o-rings 10 super simple not 150 not 130 uh it's a, it's a wonderful gun to work on. Uh, as you're going to see right now, I'm going to tear it down. Now, you know, this is made in the good uh, U.S. of A. So for any kind of Allens, you're going to use a standard set. All right. No metrics here. Everything's all standard. Love that. Um, so let's take a look at the Flex. And uh, what we're going to do to take this down, I'm going to take it down the most simplest way that I can uh, without making it over convenient. What's leaking on the flex wheel? Okay, I'm going to tell you. All right. This is what's leaking on the flex. Right here, guys. Now, guys, I'm working with two cameras here, so if I'm looking up, don't think that I'm looking into heaven. Not yet, anyway. Uh... I got a valve here, okay? So this valve here goes to the Cothran power valve made by Don. And Don is an amazing guy. Customer service, phenomenal. Two thumbs up for Mr. Don. I, uh, once I discovered where the leak was coming from, I talked to uh, Jim Gasket over at Wicked Air Rifles, and uh, once I confirmed, I 
explained to him what was going on, he uh he agreed with me. So he says, I'm gonna give uh Mr. Uh, Don a call and uh he may call you. I said, Okay, that's fine, Jim. Three hours later, I get a call. Mr. Don call me and he starts explaining to me, hey buddy, what's going on? I heard you had an issue. I was like, wow. I said, okay, thank you, Mr. Coffin. Uh, great customer service you got. I wasn't expecting a phone call from you, not in about three hours of uh, talking to <laughs> the builder of the gun, uh, Mr. Jim Gasket. But uh, he, uh, he was very concerned, you know, because he takes his product very seriously. And I love that. I love someone who takes his product very seriously. I mean, uh, you don't have too many people like that now these days. Um, but um, he uh, wanted me to run through with him what, what was going on. I explained it to him. And uh, he goes, yeah, you know, those, those seats, these, uh, these seats on the, uh, on the end, they're nylon uh, dowel dial nylon and they can start deforming after a while and that's on any gun uh th that's this is a, a a part that's made to um uh take a lot of beatings as far as the uh the hammer system comes here strikes it sends it out sends it back in with the pressure of regulated air that's in that uh, plenum. So the plenum is in this area. Let me get my little pointer here to make things easier. Okay, here's my pointer. Okay, so in here you got a plenum that sits, okay? And in that plenum full of air holds this seat forward, including with a spring that's behind this. So there's a spring that sits in here going this way, okay? The hammer on this side will hit it, strike it, open it up momentarily. Let me see. Strikes it, opens it up, and shuts it after your shot, your squirt of air comes out. So anyway, these parts can go bad. And, um, you know, it's, it's a real common thing because uh, I believe a couple of guns that I've seen out there are having the same issues. So it's not only my gun. Uh, but uh, I'm going to show you guys how to repair this. So Mr. Don says, I'm going to send you one of these valves, brand new. I have the old one in there. Uh, one thing I do love about these valves that he makes, not only they're like, he treated, they're immaculately strong, really thick, uh, uh, very, very robust piece of steel there. And uh, he has it like that because he knows that his valves are designed for high power output. So everything in there has to be extra beefy. And um, I admire that. I like that a lot. I like that. I love overkill. Overkill is better than underkill. So anyway, we're going to remove this guy and I'm going to show you how to tear down the flex today, guys. Simple tools. Set a balance. An adjustable wrench. An AR <clears throat> key to remove your AR rear stock because pretty much the flex is an AR with air. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. It's an AR with air. Uh, so it's kind of like my AR here, but it's just with air. I can take all those parts off my AR and put them on the flex. Awesome. Very comfortable with that gun. Maybe this is why this gun is becoming a favorite of mine because I'm so used to shooting my AR. When I shoot this, it feels like I'm right at home. All right, so 
what we're going to do we're going to use our adjustable to remove the scope okay remove the scope get rid of that guy now we just got a gun okay next I'm gonna do is remove the Emperor here Donnie FL LDC whatever you want to call it suppressor silencer we'll remove this guy here oh, I can't wait till they make these a uh, little different in style something they could just clamp on instead of thread on like this Two thousand years later. All right. All right. We got the Donnie off. All right. So now we got a gun, and uh, we're gonna start taking it apart. I'll show you the uh, numbers of these uh, tools that I'm using. Uh, I am not gonna remove the barrels. Not no need for it. That's I do love that. That I don't have to remove the barrel. Nothing comes off. Uh, all I'm going to do is remove it with a number. Oh, okay, so the size number to remove that will be a 332nd. 332nd key will remove these four bolts. So let me get you in frame here. Okay. All right, these four bolts. One, two, three, four. Are the ones I'm removing and we'll just unscrew them out that's one that's two two in the back that's three that's four okay once you remove them hold a little pressure here so it don't slide off you should just be able to lift it up that simple okay under there you're gonna have your transfer port okay you have an o-ring you'll have an o-ring right here your transfer port sits right on top of that o-ring okay and you have an o-ring right over here okay so two o-rings and uh that will move your top uh that was a uh, three thirty seconds guys okay so now that we have that the action moved out the way the upper uh with the barrel we can place it to the side Place that to the side. Okay, next. We will remove the bottle system. Real simple. Comes off all in one piece. Uh, the bottles, by the way, guys, are not removable while they're pressurized. So don't ever try to remove any of these bottles from the flex while they have pressure in them because you won't be able to do it because it would be too much pressure holding it. But if you were able to do it, uh, it's going to take off like a rocket. Okay, so we have the whole drop down block with the custom T, the regulators, all with this system. Okay, we'll put that to the side. Okay, now, I normally don't take off the bipod, but I'm going to do it just for this application uh, because it's not necessary to, to remove the uh, bipod. Uh, but I am going to do it just because I want to lay it down and show you guys. But before I move the bipod, I'm going to get my key here and put it on my nut. To remove OK 
Okay. Let's get a little. That's my hammer too. All right, we'll back up this nut and we'll just unscrew this just like a regular AR. Nothing different there. All right, we'll get this stock off. All right, once we got the stock off, we'll put that to the side. All right, now we're left with the center of the gun. Okay, so now. I will remove the bipod. Okay, bipod to the side. We will lay this guy down now. Okay, so we got the bipod, we got the whole gun already disassembled in about one minute's time almost. All right. So now that we remove that, I'll we'll leave those keys there. The next key we're going to use, I believe, is a 1 8. A 1 8 key. Yep. Okay, 1 8 will remove your side bolts here. Okay. That's one. And that's two. Okay, remove the plate, put it to the side. That's one of the side cover plates. Okay, your safety's here. Uh, love the safety just because I know when the gun is cocked or not. So if the gun is cocked, if you racked it back and you got a round in there, the, the, the safety will be activated. If there's no round in the chamber, you will not be able to use the safety so you know you're not loaded. So I kind of test it like that. If I'm not sure if I forget, I'm like, did I load the gun? I will play with the safety. If it doesn't move, I know it's not loaded. If the safety goes back and forth, I know it's loaded. So uh, I like that. I like that because some safeties work regardless. If it's something in the round, uh, something in the pipe or not in the pipe. All right. So we'll turn it over and we'll repeat the process all over again. Same one eighth. All right, we'll remove these side plate covers. And this gun is built so good. I mean, it's heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. But, I mean, it's really built like a tank. All metal. Everything's all aluminum here. All aluminum. All aluminum grade. Lower, upper, uh, except for the center. Here is steel. Uh, okay. So once I move the side cover plates, real simple. There's a screw up here for the hammer. I like to remove that next. And it'll be the same. Nope, it'll be the size up. It will be the uh, 964. So you put the 964 in here and remove this one Allen bolt that holds your hammer okay we'll get the tray now we'll drop that in the tray uh, the hammer system is tied into that allen bolt because that's what helps it rack the gun back and the bottom of the uh the the trigger uh the trigger itself system is working off of a spring mechanism for the bottom and as it racks back it has a little lever that comes up. So as the hammer slides back, this hammer comes up and it holds it in front of the hammer. So when I push the trigger, it drops it down, the hammer goes forward. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah, yeah, did you see that? Okay, yeah, it's like a little Macarena dance there. All right, so uh, we got the plates off. Now we just remove one more part, one bolt in the center. And your lower and your upper 
are separated. Okay. That's it. That's your lower right there. All right. So we'll look at this guy here. And that's where all the magic happens. This is your plenum. From here to here is your plenum. And then it goes through the actual uh, Catherine power valve. Okay. So now next what we're going to remove is the hammer. Remove the hammer. Hammer is super easy. There's hardly any tension on it because it threads all the way out till the tension is completely gone. You see I'm turning it, Lee, I'm turning it effortlessly. Uh, there's no pressure anyway from not being racked back anyway, but uh, some hammers do have a little tension on there to start. Because there's force already on the spring, but not on the uh, Wicked Air Rifle. All right, so that's it. Your spring is out. Pretty much is pretty much almost gutted out. Now we're going to remove the trigger. Okay, for the trigger, we're going to have the same. What is that? Uh, the... Uh, the 332nd so the 332nd also holds these in and this is that beautiful Timmy fully adjustable elite trigger two stage immaculate I actually want to buy one of these triggers for my AR uh, it's immaculate immaculate trigger uh okay so we're removing these guys here okay once i remove this back one i can actually remove the back where the spring for the hammer lies and the reason you have to remove that one nut that that one allen for the hammer is so the hammer can come all the way out and there's your hammer okay so now we have the hammer and where your hammer spring adapter goes to and your hammer spring itself okay so we just remove two more And we'll be ready to remove the Cawthorn power valve. And by the way, don't be afraid. All three of those bolts are exact size. There's no different dimensional size as far as length. They're all the same. So you don't have to worry. Once you're there pull your trigger out okay so getting to say how this hammer system works so the hammer slides back and catches this lip once it's pushed down okay so it comes back here it pushes locks it into place locks it into place by being pushed down here and it holds it and then once you push the trigger, it pushes down on this spring system, and then it lets the hammer go forward again. So really, really, really nice uh, engineering uh, to utilize a trigger, an existing trigger. Great trigger, like an AR trigger. Uh, okay, guys, so now we got the tube, and this tube here, is holding the Cawthorn power valve inside. Okay. All right. And now to remove the Cawthorn power valve. Real easy, guys. So you're gonna have. Oops. Uh, we'll get this guy out now. 
I believe this, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what size is that? 532. So we'll get the 532, and the 532 will remove three of these Allens. And they're all the same size. So you don't have to worry about confusing them. There'll be one there. There'll be one more here. There's three total. And there'll be one more here. Okay. Once you remove all three of those, you're ready to remove the Cawthorn power valve. Okay, I got a special little homemade tool I use for that. Let me see if I got it here. Yep, got it right here. Okay, so all I use to remove it, and the only reason I use this is because I don't want to damage anything. And I want to push it out from where the threaded end of uh, the, the front of the gun, which is this side. This is the side that the, uh, the air tanks will be on. So if I grab the air tanks, the air tanks are here, guys. All right. So that's where the air tank goes. Uh, you want to push the Cawthorn power valve out the same way towards the threads. So the reason I use this is because this is where the hammer is at. The hammer pin. Not the hammer, but the hammer pin and the hammer as well. But the pin is here. So I don't want to damage that pin. So what I will do is I just take a hollow PVC, uh, eighth inch thick wall, place it in there so I know I'm not hitting the center, and I'll start pushing it out. Uh, let me see if I can get that on camera for you guys. Okay. All right. Once I get it started, oh, there she goes. All right. Uh, so now we have the Cawthorn power valve. Uh, Real simple design, very effective. Okay, so let's take a look inside, which I'm going to get a bigger flathead screwdriver because I need one of those. And, uh, Okay, awesome. Little Y key I'm using here. This is not a, speci a specified tool for this, but this is what I'm using. So I take this little Y, and it's not on there tight. You can use a flathead screwdriver too, guys, uh, to, to remove this. So it's not a... Uh, it's not anything crazy, this tool here I got. So you don't have to be like, oh, you know, what kind of tool is that? It's just a regular Y tool for like any kind of big open wrenches. It's like an open wrench tool. All right, so here's the Cotton Power Valve, what's inside. You know, this is what makes the Cotton Power Valve so good as far as uh, airflow. It's really open in the back, guys. I mean, there's nothing there but like three strips holding it. Uh, three point three contacts and the rest is all open so you're getting massive air flowing through this okay once you remove that you'll have a little 
steel pin come out and I'll show you where that goes and then of course the hammer pin uh, this is the valve itself so now that we got the valve there we're gonna take the new one okay replace the old one with the new same design no difference okay while I'm in here I'll uh, do a little bit of wiping just because I know how much neat freaks you guys are out there. Oh, how come you didn't clean that while you was in there? Yeah, I'll clean it up. I'm not going to re-lube it. There's really no need to lube these parts. Uh, I lubed enough in here already. I have already taken this out to look at it before, so I already pre-lubed in there. Uh, this little pin doesn't need the actual lubing. Just put a little bit inside the walls. And uh, I'll tell you why I do that. Okay, so the pin, the pin is going back in there. The pin itself, uh, let me see if I can grab something that you guys can see this with. So simple. Okay. Okay, the little pin there has two different sizes okay it's gonna go from a small to a step up so it's gonna be a step up to a step down if you want to say it like that okay the step up to step down you want to put the step down in first okay so the smaller end of this pin is going to go inside of the valve okay so you have your valve there you put the small side in first down in first you just drop it in there that's all it's doing what's the purpose of that okay the purpose of that is I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but here, that pin locks in there with air pressure, okay? And right here, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little bleed hole, and that right there serves a purpose, okay? So if you're getting a little leakage, like a slow, slow leak, where if you left your gun filled for like two or three days and you see your pressure go down you have an o-ring failure the only o-ring that's on this valve okay it's right there guys that's the only o-ring i'll show it to you and it's the only o-ring on this valve it's right there and this one i'm sorry there's two o-rings so i was wrong i have it's i have a uh, 11 instead of 10 o-rings i didn't count that o-ring so that's 11 O-rings on my gun. Okay, that's little tiny little O-ring right there. It sits right in there. Okay? So this valve moves very small movements, of course, like this, back and forth. Okay, that's how it goes. It don't come out. It never comes out. It stays right in there like that and it only moves that much just barely to the edge of that o-ring okay that's your hammer movement from getting struck by the hammer and that o-ring is there to see if you have any kind of leakage in this area besides your dowel or if something went wrong with your gun uh with this valve locking up at least you know you can start relieving some pressure through there and the gun doesn't have to stay overloaded uh I, i'm just assuming that's the purpose of that uh release valve to release the air that 
is in this chamber back here. And what I said, this will be uh, in here is your plenum. Uh, no, I'm sorry. In here will be your regulated air in the plenum. And then here, from here to here, from here to here is your air that's escaping through here to go to your uh, uh, porthole. Okay, so we drop the pin with the taper side down. Okay, let's do this one more time. Taper side, this is low, smaller side than the back. It's going in first. Drop it. Okay, once you drop that in there, you're going to place your spring. And the back where it's threaded. Back into the body. And it's that simple. Screw it back down. This does not require any hard tension at all, guys. At all. It screws down. You can hand tighten it. Just finger tight. That's all it needs to be, guys. Finger tight. Let me see if I can get this camera to come back out a little bit more. Towards this edge. Okay. So there you go. Finger tight only. Okay. So once I got it to where I can't push it no more, I come with this little tool and just give it a, a 16th of a turn more and it's done. So we got the new valve in there, uh, plenum uh, side, the plenum side looks great. We screwed it all the way down and the uh, hammer side looks good. And the transfer port side looks good. So all three sides are looking really good. Okay. We will stick it back in the same way we pushed it out. We will put it in back on the thread side where the bottles go. It's a thread side and a non-thread side. Always on the thread side. And you'll put in the pin first. Okay. O-ring outside. So this valve technically, if I had to be real technical, has four O-rings. The one that you saw on the pin, the one that's green that sits on the back of this copper uh, nut, the one right here on this edge. And the one on the transfer port. Okay, so we will push this through. Okay, so we will work it down till we get right to that magic number. Okay, there we go. I can see it. All right, it's a little off, but that's fine. You could take one of your tools to remove O-rings and push it to the proper alignment. Okay, that's simple, guys. A little bit more, and we're in. Perfectly centered. All right? So there she goes. She's perfectly centered. All your holes are going to line up again. As long as that transfer port is lined up, everything else is lined up perfectly. Okay, so we will start by replacing one of the bolts that hold the uh, body. Okay. Okay. That's one. Next one. There should be three there total. 
one on this side which I just placed one on the opposite side get that one in there as well okay make sure they're flush you shouldn't be able to feel them they should be flush on both sides and then the third one which is in here will go on the bottom side of the plenum I mean of the uh, transfer port transfer port one completely opposite of it one on the east side of it okay there you go you have three in there once you have all three in there you know check your o-ring in there before you get ready to put the uh, your uh, action back on top uh, okay so from there next step to reverse the process is to throw a little lube on this so your hammer slides nice and free those are the only two contacts which would be on the bottom the bottom and top and then I'll put some around these rings on both sides of these rings okay you don't need to put any in the front of it just because that's where the hammer strikes okay front side drop straight down make sure you take this is where that little Allen sits and that goes right above your transfer port so you will slide that in okay you will grab your little bolt make sure it has it comes with a little uh, copper uh, it comes with a little copper ring I replaced it with an aluminum for mine because the copper was just a little too soft when I put a little tension on it it started bending out I'll put that started get it started like that and tighten it down don't have to be crazy tight I'll just give it a little crank just so it stops and a little force after that and that's it and then your hammer will move freely okay once I put that I'm gonna put back the back which also aligns up a certain way right here okay you'll see there's a hole there on this second one not the first one towards the back but the second one it lines up there okay but before we put that on let's put the trigger okay the trigger will go back on we will sit it up there okay make sure that the uh your uh hammer is all the way forward guys okay place one don't matter what order they're all the same size all these uh um allen bolts are the same size i would just put the two front ones first okay and i'll explain to you why i'll do the front ones first only tying these up i'm still new working at this gun but it's a real it's a fairly simple fairly simple uh air rifle to work on okay after i put the two front ones on then i will place this because this is where the thread is for the one for the back which locks in the uh, hammer spring uh, threaded area okay so you line that up okay then you get your third drop it in there and tighten up that guy as well and everything lines up so perfect I've yet to see anything out of alignment that doesn't you know that they could have improved on as far as the accuracy so 
I guess the equipment they use at uh, wars, really good equipment. CNC machines and their drilling hole machines, very accurate. Everything lines up perfect like it belongs there and it should belong there. All right, so once I got that on, I got the back where the hammer spring adjuster goes, I will place the hammer spring inside and put it back to the factory specs, which is the way it came with mine was uh, just basically it was sitting on the, um, it was sitting flush with the bottom of the, of the final threads at the bottom. And you can go on way more. I can make it way more tighter than what it is, but I don't I don't feel it needs it. So uh, I adjusted most of my power with the uh, regulator, but now I can fine tune it with the hammer spring. Okay, so right there looks about right. All right. And uh, now I have my back hammer spring. Put my little Allen bolt on back with the with the uh, with the hammer. Got the spring on there. Now I'm ready to put back my lower and get the lower on. Okay. Once I get the lower on, it's only one. Uh, Allen that says holds that in. That's it, done deal. Okay, now that we did that, we are ready to put our side plates back on. Okay, so the side plate that will go on that side will have a hole like this for the safety. Okay. And we will take our Allen and shut her down. Get that one started here and close this one in all the way. And now we'll go back to this one and lock it all the way down. Okay. Don't have to be crazy tight, just snug. Okay, flip it over. Now we'll do the other side. Same thing. Start it there. Start it here. Lock it in. Lock it in. That's it. Okay, next step. Now, just because I don't want to hold the gun anymore in the side position, I will get the bipod. Makes a bad Robocop gun. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Robocop. All right. Anywho, now that we got that going, I will take my bipod and connect her again. She's starting to look kind of, sort of like a gun again. All right, next step, we will put the bottle back. Screw this bad boy back in. Make sure you don't cross thread, guys. You cross thread this, forget it, you're in trouble. Take your time. Do not cross thread this. It should go in that smooth every time. All right. So there you go. And you turn it till you get, there's, there's a point. I'm gonna show you. It goes right to here and it don't turn no more. So you don't want to go that far. You just want to go right before you get to, it stops. If you took this gun apart before, you'll know that feeling where it needs to stop. Uh, if not, just turn it to it stops and then just rotate it till it's all even again. And make sure it's even 
especially when you pressurize it because if you pressurize it like this it's going to stay like that you're going to have to degas the whole gun make sure it's aligned perfectly the way you like it the way it looks even even if you want to me i'm so ocd i put a level on it you know so i get a level and i i level i make sure it's perfect when i get it on there uh uh so um that's the way i do it you know you guys can do it the way you want to do it uh for me i'm real lucky with this double bottle system i can sit on that one block and it's perfect but uh yeah so i'll make sure that that's sitting perfect before i put air in this because that's a whole lot of air whole lot a lot of uh okay so next we will put back is the stock stocks self-explanatory you just screw it on till it comes to a complete stop or wherever you want to adjust it to it's fully adjustable as well you know you don't have to have it to it bottoms out like mine's bottoms out there okay i'll turn it to a straight again take the nut you know make sure all this i'm ocd so it's got to be perfect for me Oh, tools fell right there okay take my little ar tool and now i got a real hammer and i'll apply some pressure to it not much don't need much it's locked in all right now that's done what's left is the action get the action on there now with the action guys what i like to do is you know how it goes down you know it goes down like this i like to push it forward so it goes down and it kind of recess back i go up forward and then i place this back and the reason why i do that is because this is going to marry the bolt that's in here so if you have okay mr butterfingers if you have this bolt behind it no good it's got to be in front not behind it in front not behind it okay so i push that forward to make sure that it's going to be correct okay I sit it up there, it's all the way forward, I drop, I guess the rest of the stuff, you know, I'm not used to doing these kind of videos, this is harder, this is harder than working on it by myself, but I do it all for the love of my air gun community, so take it as it is guys, I like to look out for my fellow air gunners out there. Even the ones who are uh, mean, uh, they have no positive things to say, I still appreciate you guys too. So, once I get them tightened, okay, I'll look for the last bolt that fell. All right. Get back in my chair. Oop. Sorry about that. Gave you guys a little headache there. All right. Place back the last one. So there's only four up top that hold down this action. Okay. And look at this. We got a gun already. Gun is done. All right. Now you make sure you torque these guys down. Do not torque them down hard either, guys. They don't need to be torqued down hard. I don't even use the long end. I torque them down with the short end, and that's it. See, I'm not putting them in the head here. I am not going to do that. I'm going to just use the short, the long end down, and the little short end is what I'm going to torque it with. Once I get that, that's it. It's done. Rigid, strong, ready to go.
Now, double check it. Okay. Okay, so now you know that you're good. All right. Because if you didn't have it on correctly, you won't be able to move this at all. You won't even be able to lift this up. It won't even go up. But it moves real easily. All right. So now that we have a complete gun, all we're going to do is add the uh, accessories. We'll put on this uh, Emperor back. And... We will put on the scope. Okay. And we will torque her down. see if we hold she holds air now okay guys so we're back we got pressure in the gun I don't hear no more leaking that's a good sign we will dry fire the gun one time and if it doesn't leak we got it Problem solved, guys. The leak is gone. Uh, replaced the old coffin valve. Replaced the old one with the new one. And the new one, the dowel on the new one is holding up much more better. And uh, I, have, I still have a spare dowel that I can put in there if it failed ever again. Uh... Of course, Mr. Uh, uh, Don told me, he says, if it fails again, to please send him, and he will pay it at his expense, the whole entire body with the valve back to him so he can look over it to see what failed or if there was some kind of uh, uh, error with the with the if there was a little flaw in the design of that particular valve everything you built you could build a thousand of them you'll still have five or six that are, will be bad out of a thousand as precise as if your machines are and equipment is you can always have something that's a little off so he's he was very surprised by it because he doesn't get these kind of complaints uh which i wasn't really complaining i just you know had an issue but a uh, very concerned man, and 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 Don Coffin is a really awesome uh, uh, gentleman. There uh, does a real good service for for his fe fellow air gunners. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy with that. But if it if it leaked again, he wants it back so he can send me a whole new one and look over the one that I have to further further test test it, make sure that. It wasn't some kind of uh, quality issue with the uh, with the way it was it was built, but um, that's about it, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I got more coming up. Thirty-five caliber flex is next, guys. That's what I got it chambered in right now. So that's our next big boy. Now that we took care of the little problem, easy fix, easy to work on. If I was doing it by myself, it would have been a 15-minute job tearing down this whole thing. But explaining it, showing it, takes an hour. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys on the next round. God bless.